fun, sparkly, and most importantly, really simple to customize. This video was something that came about while I was noodling around with CC Particle World. You don't need any plugins, everything is 100% native After Effects and renders really quickly. But most importantly, it can be quickly adapted to any song. I've grabbed this one, Freeling by Laura Disky from YouTube's audio library, which is really handy when you want to share an animation, but don't want to be hit by a copyright strike. Or you can use copyright music and just put it on TikTok and go, what are you going to do, sue China? That might not be their business model exactly. But with your music imported, drag it onto the new comp button. This creates a comp of the same length as the music, and the width and height will be whatever your last comp was, which you can change in composition, composition settings. Okay, now go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Convert Audio to Keyframes. This creates a null object with three slider controls whose values are set to the volume of the music. I know there are some pay for plugins that do a slicker job, but this works pretty well when used in the next steps. Now, create a new null object by going to Layer, New, Null Object. Hit Enter and rename this to Null1 and make it 3D. Now create a new solid by going to Layer, New, Solid. Hit Enter and rename this to Particles. Next step, my subscribers will know I have a preset available which links CC Particle World to a null object, if the null object is called null1. So subscribers, go ahead and apply that preset. New viewers, welcome! If your journey with me through After Effects lasts decades or... What? Oh, I'm sorry, that was just YouTube's middle-aged warning, I'm quoting Frasier. New viewers, duck down into the description for this video and you'll find three CC Particle World expressions. Hit the subscribe button, then copy the first expression. Then expand the producer, and holding the ALT key, click on the Position X stopwatch and then paste in the X expression. Then go back to the description, hit the like button, and copy the second expression. And paste this into the position Y stopwatch. And then do the same for position Z, making sure to leave a nice comment on your way. So now, we have a 3D null object controlling our emitter. Select the null one layer, and I like to rename this to controller, so I don't lose track of it, and don't worry about the expressions they'll update. Next, go to Effect, Expression Controls, Layer Control. This handy control means that if we drop a different piece of music in and run the audio keyframes again, all we have to do is point this control to the new layer. I also like to have all the values all in one place, so go to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control, and rename this to Audio, and then hold Alt and click on its stopwatch, and then use the Pick Whip to link to the layer controls, and then use the Pick Whip again and link to the Both Channels slider. Then in the Expressions area, highlight the middle bit of the code that starts with this comp and ends with the quote and bracket, and delete it. So what we have now is that this slider will pick up the value of both channels from whichever layer the layer control selects. Obviously if it doesn't have a both channel slider then the expression breaks, but then I'm not Dan Eberts. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's now use a really cool bit of Dan's code to determine the maximum value the slider ever gets to. Add a new slider, hit enter and rename this to max value. Back in the description, copy the Dan Eberts code. Alt click and paste this into the slider's expression area. And when you do, the slider jumps up to its highest value it reaches, in my case 39. But expressions run every frame and this particular expression checks every single keyframe, so your computer will slow down a lot. So now that we know the value, just click on the equal sign to disable the expression, and manually set the maximum to 39. Did I need to do that? Possibly not, but it's a neat piece of code and it saves some guesswork. Okay, now add another slider, 
Call it mean and set this to 20. This will take guesswork, but essentially acts to limit the particles. You see, the next step is to control the birth rate and velocity of our particles by the volume of the music. Make sure the three sliders are visible in the timeline. I find the quickest way to do this is to set keyframes for them and then hit U, and then I can remove the keyframes. Select the particles layer and holding Alt, click on the birth rate stopwatch and type ease brackets. Ease is like the linear expression, but with easy ease, so transitions build up rather than a straight increase. Use the pick whip to link to the audio property. This is our driver. Whatever value the audio property is, the ease expression will convert it. Type comma, and then pick whip to the minimum slider, comma, and pick whip to the maximum, comma. And now add the birth rate values. Two for when the audio is quiet, comma, 10 for when it's at its max. Make sure all the brackets are closed, highlight the expression, and copy it to your clipboard. You can sort of see what's going on, but let's improve that. Expand producer and zero out the three radiuses. You might expand these later, that's up to you. In physics, set the gravity to zero. And now hold Alt and click on the velocity stopwatch and paste in the copied expression, but change the two to a zero and the 10 to a 0 0.1. CC particle world's values are hella different. Hmm, I can't see much. Set the longevity to 10 seconds, slightly better. Set the resistance to one and set the type to jet sideways and drop extra to zero this setting changes depending on the type selected. Now it still doesn't look impressive, so I'll quickly just add a couple of position keyframes which should show what's happening. There we go, every time the volume jumps, ideally from the beat, we get a mini explosion of particles. But if you adjust the minimum value, see what happens? This gives us control over what level generates an explosion, an eruption, an ejaculate. No, no. Now it's up to you. You can edit the position of the controller manually, or you can let After Effects take the wheel. Take the wheel. On the controller layer, hit P to expose the position controls, and type wiggle brackets 0 0.3 comma 250 close brackets. So once every three seconds move the controller by up to 250 pixels. The higher the frequency value, the more often the change happens. So one is once per second, two is twice per second, 0 0.3 is every three seconds. This still gives you the ability to set its position, but at the same time have some randomness in there. Now we get, okay, pretty cool, but we're a bit far away from the action. Go to layer, new camera. Expand it on the timeline and use the pick whip to link the camera's point of interest to the controller null's position. So now you're the world's greatest cameraman. But we're still kind of far away. So we're going to use the same technique I used in the wormhole videos. We'll set the camera's position to be two seconds behind the controller. That might get a little messy. So first, with the controller selected, add another expression slider. Hit enter and rename this to cam distance, or you know, something that would actually make sense. We're going to use this in addition to following the controller null to shove the camera off to the side. Make sure this value is visible either in the effects controls or in the timeline, and then alt click on the camera's position stopwatch. And type var pause equals, creating a variable called pause and then use the pick whip to link to the controller's null position. Dot, value at time, with capitals on the A and the T. Brackets, time, minus two. Close brackets, semicolon. So this is getting the position value of the null two seconds behind the current time. On a new line type, X equals pause, square brackets zero, close squares, semicolon new line, y equals pause, square brackets one, close squares, semicolon, new line, 
z equals pos square brackets two close squares semicolon. So now we have all three coordinate properties as x, y, and z. Now we need to put them into an array for After Effects. But for x, we'll add the cam distance slider. On a new line, add square brackets x plus and pick whip the cam distance slider, comma, y, comma, z, close square brackets. If all this gets confusing, the project is linked in the description below. Download that and you can copy the expressions right out of it. So with cam distance set to zero, it seems a little manic. Let's increase that to 500. And that's it. Finishing touches, I listened to the music and set keyframes for the camera's distance so that I could create dramatic sweeps. Remember, you can go into negative numbers too. I also keyframed the particle colors so that we got some nice variations and set the transfer mode in the effect to screen. To get the background, I added a new solid and used one of the built-in backgrounds in effects and presets. And added a four color gradient over the top so I could set my own colors. And then I added a second solid and applied the CC environment effect to it, pointing at the background layer and choosing effects and masks. It's simple enough, and if people are looking at the background, then you've not done a good job with the dancing particles. Camera distance keyframes aside, if you now want to swap in your own music, it's a simple case of add the new music, use the keyframe assistant to generate a null with keyframes, and then select the new null in your layer control. That's got to be worth a like, right? And if you have access to YouTube in VR, either through Google Cardboard or PlayStation VR or similar, check out my Dancing Particles in 360 space. If you're curious about AE VR, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a separate tutorial about how to use After Effects VR tools. And of course, if you do use this in your own project, please share a link in the comments. I'd love to see this in action.